Lee Wellen ap Gruffud, sometimes written as Lee Wellen ap Griffud, also known as Lee Wellen the Last, or, in Welsh, Lee Wellen in Llyw Olaf, was King of Wales from 1258, until his death at Kilmeri, in 1282. The son of Gruffud ap Lee Wellen Vower and grandson of Lee Wellen the Great. He was the last sovereign prince and king of Wales before its conquest by Edward I of England. Genealogy and Early Life Lee Wellen was the last of the three sons of Gruffud, the eldest son of Lee Wellen the Great, and Sinanna Furge Caradog, the daughter of Caradoc ap Thomas ap Rodri, Lord of Anglesey. The eldest was Alwain Gok ap Gruffud and Lee Wellen had two younger brothers, Dafford ap Gruffud and Rodri ap Gruffud. Lee Wellen is thought to have been born around 1222 or 1223. He is first heard of holding lands in the Vale of Cluid around 1244. Following his grandfather's death in 1240, Lee Wellen's uncle, Dafford ap Lee Wellen, succeeded him as ruler of Gwyneth. Lee Wellen's father, Gruffud, and his brother, Orwain, were initially kept prisoner by Dafford then transferred into the custody of King Henry III of England. Gruffud died in 1244, from a fall while trying to escape from his cell at the top of the Tower of London. The window from which he attempted to escape the tower was bricked up and can still be seen to this day. This freed Dafford ap Lee Wellen's hand as King Henry could no longer use Gruffud against him, and war broke out between him and King Henry in 1245. Lee Wellen supported his uncle in the savage fighting that followed. Orwain, meanwhile, was freed by Henry after his father's death in the hope that he would start a civil war in Gwyneth, but stayed in Chester. So when Dafford died in February 1246 without leaving an heir, Lee Wellen had the advantage of being on the spot. Early reign Lee Wellen and Orwain came to terms with King Henry and in 1247 signed the Treaty of Woodstock at Woodstock Palace. The terms they were forced to accept restricted them to Gwynedd UWCH Conwy, the part of Gwynedd west of the River Conwy, which was divided between them. Gwynedd as Conwy, east of the river, was taken over by King Henry. When Dafford ap Gruffud came of age, King Henry accepted his homage and announced his intention to give him part of the already reduced Gwyneth. Lee Wellen refused to accept this, and Orwain and Dafford formed an alliance against him. This led to the Battle of Bryn Derwin in June 1255. Lee Wellen defeated Orwain and Dafford and captured him, thereby becoming sole ruler of Gwyneth UWCH Conwy. Lee Wellen now looked to expand his area of control. The population of Gwynedd as Conwy resented English rule. This area, also known as Buffed Vlad, had been given by King Henry to his son Edward and during the summer of 1256, he visited the area, but failed to deal with grievances against the rule of his officers. An appeal was made to Lee Wellen, who, that November, crossed the River Conwy with an army, accompanied by his brother, Dafford, whom he had released from prison. By early December, Lee Wellen controlled all of Gwynedd as Conwy apart from the royal castles at Dusseth in Dunordud as a reward for his support and dispossessing his brother-in-law, Rhys Feechan, who supported the king. An English army led by Stephen Bowson invaded to try to restore Rhys Feechan but was decisively defeated by Welsh forces at the Battle of Cadvin in June 1257. With Rhys having previously slipped away to make his peace with Lee Wellen, Rhys Feechan now accepted Lee Wellen as overlord, but this caused problems for Lee Wellen, as Rhys's lands had already been given to Maradud. Lee Wellen restored his lands to Rhys, but the king's envoys approached Maradud and offered him Rhys's lands if he would change sides. Maradud paid homage to Henry in late 1257. By early 1258, Lee Wellen was using the title Prince of Wales, first used in an agreement between Lee Wellen and his supporters and the Scottish nobility associated with the Cumann family. The English crown refused to recognise this title however, and in 1263, Lee Wellen's brother, Dafford, went over to King Henry. 
On 12 December 1263 in the Camoche of Astumana, Griffith ap Gwen Wynn Wynn did homage and swore fealty to Lee Wellen. In return he was made a vassal lord and the lands taken from him by Lee Wellen about six years earlier were restored to him. In England, Simon de Montfort defeated the king's supporters at the Battle of Lewis in 1264, capturing the king and Prince Edward. Lee Wellen began negotiations with de Montfort, and in 1265, offered him 30,000 marks in exchange for a permanent peace in which Lee Wellen's right to rule Wales would be acknowledged. The Treaty of Pipton, the 22nd of June 1265, established an alliance between Lee Wellen and de Montfort. But the very favourable terms given to Lee Wellen in this treaty were an indication of de Montfort's weakening position. De Montfort was to die at the Battle of Evesham in 1265, a battle in which Lee Wellen took no part. Supremacy in Wales after Simon de Montfort's death, Lee Wellen launched her campaign in order to rapidly gain a bargaining position before King Henry had fully recovered. In 1265, Lee Wellen captured Harden Castle and routed the combined armies of Hamo Lestrange and Morris Fitzgerald in North Wales. Lee Wellen then moved on to Brackhane Yog, and in 1266, he routed Roger Mortimer's army. With these victories and the backing of the papal legate, Otto Buono, Lee Wellen opened negotiations with the king, and was eventually recognised as Prince of Wales by King Henry in the Treaty of Montgomery in 1267. In return for the title, the retention of the lands he had conquered and the homage of almost all the native rulers of Wales. He was to pay a tribute of 25,000 marks in yearly installments of 3,000 marks, and could if he wished, purchase the homage of the one outstanding native prince, Maradud ap Reese of Dehu Bath, for another 5,000 marks. However, Lee Wellen's territorial ambitions gradually made him unpopular with some minor Welsh leaders, particularly the princes of South Wales. The Treaty of Montgomery marked the high point of Lee Wellen's power. Problems began arising soon afterwards. Initially a dispute with Gilbert de Clare concerning the allegiance of a Welsh nobleman holding lands in Glamorgan. Gilbert built Carefilly Castle in response to this. King Henry sent a bishop to take possession of the castle while the dispute was resolved but when Gilbert regained the castle by trickery, the king was unable to do anything about it. Following the death of King Henry in late 1272, with the new King Edward I of England away from the kingdom, the rule fell to three men. One of them, Roger Mortimer, was one of Lee Wellen's rivals in the marches. When Humphrey de Buin tried to take back Brackane Yog, which was granted to Lee Wellen by the Treaty of Montgomery, Mortimer supported de Buin. Lee Wellen was also finding it difficult to raise the annual sums required under the terms of this treaty, and ceased making payments. In early 1274, there was a plot by Lee Wellen's brother, Dafford, and Grufford ap Gwen Winwin of Powers when Winwin and his son, Orwain, to kill Lee Wellen. Dafford was with Lee Wellen at the time, and it was arranged that Orwain would come with armed men on 2 February to carry out the assassination. However, he was prevented by a snowstorm. Lee Wellen did not discover the full details of the plot until Orwain confessed to the Bishop of Bangor. He said that the intention had been to make Dafford Prince of Gwyneth, and that Dafford would reward Grufford with lands. Dafford and Gruffudd fled to England where they were maintained by the king and carried out raids on Lee Wellen's lands, increasing Lee Wellen's resentment. When Edward called Lee Wellen to Chester in 1275 to pay homage, Lee Wellen refused to attend. Lee Wellen also made an enemy of King Edward by continuing to ally himself with the family of Simon de Montfort, even though their power was now greatly reduced. Lee Wellen sought to marry Eleanor de Montfort, born in 1252, Simon de Montfort's daughter. They were married by proxy in 1275, but King Edward took exception to the marriage, in part because Eleanor was his first cousin. Her mother was Eleanor of England, daughter of King John and Princess of the House of Plantagenet. 
When Ellen sailed from France to meet Lee Wellen, Edward hired pirates to seize her ship and she was imprisoned at Windsor Castle until Lee Wellen made certain concessions. In 1276, Edward declared Lee Wellen a rebel and in 1277, gathered an enormous army to march against him. Edward's intention was to disinherit Lee Wellen completely and take over Gwyneth as Conwy himself. He was considering two options for Gwyneth UWCH Conwy, either to divide it between Lee Wellen's brothers, Dafford and Orwain, or to annex Anglesey and divide only the mainland between the two brothers. Edward was supported by Dafford ap Grufford and Grufford ap Gwen Winwin. Many of the lesser Welsh princes who had supported Lee Wellen now hastened to make peace with Edward. By the summer of 1277, Edward's forces had reached the River Conwy and encamped at Daganwy, while another force had captured Anglesey and took possession of the harvest there. This deprived Lee Wellen and his men of food, forcing them to seek terms. Treaty of Aberconwy. What resulted was the Treaty of Aberconwy, which guaranteed peace in Gwynedd in return for several difficult concessions from Lee Wellen, including confining his authority to Gwynedd UWCH Conwy once again. Part of Gwynedd's Conwy was given to Dafford ap Grufford, with a promise that if Lee Wellen died without an heir, he would be given a share of Gwynedd UWCH Conwy instead. Lee Wellen was forced to acknowledge the English king as his sovereign. Initially he had refused, but after the events of 1276, Lee Wellen was stripped of all but a small portion of his lands. He went to meet Edward and found Eleanor lodged with the royal family at Worcester after Lee Wellen agreed to Edward's demands. Edward gave them permission to be married at Worcester Cathedral. A stained glass window exists to this day depicting the wedding of the Prince of Wales and Lady Eleanor. By all accounts, the marriage was a genuine love match. Lee Wellen is not known to have fathered any illegitimate children, which is extremely unusual for the Welsh royalty last campaign and death. By early 1282, many of the lesser princes who had supported Edward against Lee Wellen in 1277 were becoming disillusioned with the exactions of the royal offices. On Palm Sunday that year, Dafford ap Grufford attacked the English at Harden Castle and then laid siege to Rydlin. The revolt quickly spread to other parts of Wales, with Aberystwyth Castle captured and burnt and rebellion in East Radtoe in South Wales. Also inspired by Dafford according to the annals, where Carreg Senan Castle was captured, Lee Wellen, according to a letter he sent to the Archbishop of Canterbury John Peckham, was not involved in the planning of the revolt. He felt obliged, however, to support his brother and a war began for which the Welsh were ill-prepared. Personal tragedy also struck him at this time when, on or about 19 June 1282, his wife Eleanor de Montfort died shortly after giving birth to their daughter Gwent Leanne. Events followed a similar pattern to 1277, with Edward's forces capturing Gwynedd's Conwy, Anglesey and taking the harvest. The force occupying Anglesey were defeated, however, when trying to cross to the mainland in the Battle of Mole Wydon. The Archbishop of Canterbury tried mediating between Lee Wellen and Edward, and Lee Wellen was offered a large estate in England if he would surrender Wales to Edward, while Dafford was to go on crusade and not return without the king's permission. In an emotional reply which has been compared to the Declaration of Arbroath, Lee Wellen said he would not abandon the people whom his ancestors had protected since the days of Camber son of Brutus. The offer was refused. Lee Wellen now left Dafford to lead the defence of Gwynedd and took a force south, trying to rally support in mid and south Wales and open up an important second front. On the 11th of December at the Battle of Oriwyn Bridge at Builth Wells, he was killed while separated from his army. The exact circumstances are unclear and there are two conflicting accounts of his death. Both accounts agree that Lee Wellen was tricked into leaving the bulk of his army and was then attacked and killed. The first account says that Lee Wellen and his chief minister approached the forces of Edmund Mortimer and Hugh Lestrange after crossing a bridge. 
They then heard the sound of battle as the main body of his army was met in battle by the forces of Roger Dispenser and Gruffud ap Gwen Winwin. Lee Wellen turned to rejoin his forces and was pursued by a lone lancer who struck him down. It was not until some time later that an English knight recognized the body as that of the prince. This version of events was written in the north of England some 50 years later and has suspicious similarities with details about the Battle of Stirling Bridge in Scotland. An alternative version of events written in the east of England by monks in contact with Lee Welland's exiled daughter, Gwent Leanne Furch Lee Welland, and niece, Gladys Furch Dafford, states that Lee Welland, at the front of his army, approached the combined forces of Edmund and Roger Mortimer. Hugo Lestrange and Gruffud ap Gwen win win on the promise that he would receive their homage. This was a deception. His army was immediately engaged in fierce battle during which a significant section of it was routed, causing Lee Wellen and his 18 retainers to become separated. At around dusk, Lee Wellen and a small group of his retainers were ambushed and chased into a wood at Abbott. Lee Wellen was surrounded and struck down. As he lay dying, he asked for a priest and gave away his identity. He was then killed and his head hewn from his body. His person was searched and various items recovered, including a list of conspirators, and his privy seal. If the king wishes to have the copy of the list found in the breaches of Lee Wellen, he can have it from Edmund Mortimer, who has custody of it and also of Lee Wellen's privy seal and certain other things found in the same place. Archbishop Peckham, in his first letter to Robert Bishop of Bath and Wells, dated 17 December 1282 there are legends surrounding the fate of Lee Welland's severed head. It is known that it was sent to Edward at Ridlin and after being shown to the English troops based in Anglesey, Edward sent the head on to London. In London, it was set up in the city pillory for a day, and crowned with ivy. Then it was carried by a horseman on the point of his lance to the Tower of London and set up over the gate. It was still on the Tower of London 15 years later. The last resting place of Lee Welland's body is not known for certain. However it has always been tradition that it was interred at the Cistercian Abbey at Fabiquemere. On 28 December 1282 Archbishop Peckham wrote a letter to the Archdeacon of Brecon at Brecon Priory in order to inquire and clarify if the body of Lee Wellen has been buried in the church of Cumhere, and he was bound to clarify the latter before the Feast of Epiphany, because he had another mandate on this matter, and ought to have certified the Lord Archbishop before Christmas, and has not done so. There is further supporting evidence for this hypothesis in the Chronicle of Florence of Worcester, as for the body of the prince, his mangled trunk. It was interred in the Abbey of Cumhere, belonging to the Cistercian Order. Another theory is that his body was transferred to Lanrumney Hall in Cardiff. The poet Gruffud Abier Ynad Cock wrote in an elegy on Lee Wellen. Do you not see the path of the wind and the rain? Do you not see the oak trees in turmoil? Cold my heart in a fearful breast for the king, the oaken door of Aberfraw there is an enigmatic reference in the Welsh Annals brewed white a wisogen. Dot and then Lee Wellen was betrayed in the belfry at Bangor by his own men. No further explanation is given. Annexation. With the loss of Lee Wellen, Welsh morale and the will to resist diminished. Dafford was Lee Wellen's named successor. He carried on the struggle for several months but in June 1283 was captured in the uplands above Abergoon Gregan at Bearer Mountain together with his family. He was brought before Edward, then taken to Shrewsbury where a special session of Parliament condemned him to death. He was dragged through the streets, hanged, drawn and courted. After the final defeat of 1283, Gwyneth was stripped of all royal insignia, a relics, and regalia. Edward took particular delight in appropriating the royal home of the Gwyneth dynasty. In August 1284, he set up his court at Abergoon Gregan, Gwyneth. With equal deliberateness, he removed all the insignia of majesty from Gwyneth. A coronet was solemnly presented to the shrine of Saint. Edward at Westminster, the matrices of the seals of Lee Wellen, of his wife, 
and his brother Dafford were melted down to make a chalice which was given by the king to Vale Royal Abbey where it remained until the dissolution of that institution in 1538, the most precious religious relic in Gwyneth. The fragment of the true cross known as Cross of Neath was paraded through London in May 1285 in a solemn procession on foot led by the king the Queen, the Archbishop of Canterbury and fourteen bishops, and the magnates of the realm. Edward was thereby appropriating the historical and religious regalia of the House of Gwynedd and placarding to the world the extinction of its dynasty and the annexation of the principality to his crown. Commenting on this a contemporary chronicler is said to have declared, and then all Wales was cast to the ground. Most of Lee Welland's relatives ended their lives in captivity, with the notable exceptions of his younger brother Rodri, who had long since sold his claim to the crown and endeavoured to keep a very low profile, and a distant cousin, Mad Dog Ap Lee Wellen who led a future revolt and claimed the title Prince of Wales in 1294. Lee Wellen and Eleanor's baby daughter Gwent Leanne of Wales was captured by Edward's troops in 1283. She was interned at Sempringham Priory in England for the rest of her life, becoming a nun in 1317 and dying without issue in 1337, probably knowing little of her heritage and speaking none of her language. Stafford's two surviving sons were captured and incarcerated at Bristol Jail, where they eventually died many years later. Lee Wellen's elder brother Orwain Gok disappears from the record in 1282 and the presumption is that he was murdered. Lee Wellen's surviving brother Rodri survived and held manors in Gloucestershire, Cheshire, Surrey, and Powys and died around 1315. His grandson, Orwain Lorgoch, later claimed the title Prince of Wales. Family Tree